There is only one God and one faith. Every religion says and thinks they are the true faith. Let's look at this. Back in the day, God gave Moses ten commandments, and then Moses did 613 commandments or principles from that. The Republic of Israel was established by the Jews after the British mandate over Palestine expired in 1948. After a six-day war with Arab forces in 1967, the Israelis extended their territory. Despite having nuclear bombs, Israel is not a theocracy like the nation of Israel in the days of Moses. The establishment of the Republic of Israel does not correspond to the restoration of the Jews to their homeland in 537 BCE, fulfilling the purpose of Israel's God, Jehovah. The establishment of the Republic of Israel does not fulfill Hebrew scripture prophecies or indicate the coming of the Jewish Messiah. The natural Jews of today do not know which of Israel's twelve tribes they belong to, and they lack a priesthood, high priest, temple at Jerusalem, and altar for offering sacrifices according to the law God gave them through Moses. However, Jehovah God does have an Israel on earth, even in this 20th century. The Christian Apostle Paul, who became Saul of Tarsus, addresses a long letter to those in Rome as God's beloved ones called to be holy ones. Paul identifies those considered by God to be true Israelites, not Israelites as to the flesh but according to the Spirit. He likens the nation of Israel to an olive tree linked to Abraham, and those unbelieving Israelites were lopped off the symbolic olive tree rooted in Jehovah God. Those taking their places became Abraham's seed as proselytes, or Israelites by adoption on the part of God, the one greater than Abraham. Paul then promises that all Israel shall be saved when the fullness of the Gentiles comes in, turning away ungodliness from Jacob. Paul's message is not about the fulfillment of the Gentile times but rather the fullness of the Gentiles. The Gentile times ran out in 1914, and today, the Republic of Israel and natural Jews worldwide do not claim to be in the new covenant established by Jehovah. The Deliverer of the Covenant, Jesus Christ, has not yet come out of Zion. However, a remnant of ancient Israel accepted Jesus as the Messiah on Pentecost, and they began to receive the promised Holy Spirit and be brought into the New Covenant. However, not enough natural Israelites became part of the symbolic olive tree rooted in Greater Abraham. All Israel to be saved is the spiritual Israel brought to birth at Pentecost, begotten with God's reproductive spirit. The promised Deliverer came on the day of Pentecost, pouring out Jehovah's Holy Spirit upon about 120 disciples in Jerusalem. This spiritual Israel eventually included non-Jewish believers in the promised Deliverer. At the conversion of Samaritans and outright Gentiles, Jehovah, the greater Abraham, adopted these non-Jewish believers into his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, the symbolic trunk of the figurative olive tree. Since the event of 36 CE, God has accomplished the work of saving all Israel, a period much longer than the Jewish age of exclusive divine favor from 1513 BCE to 36 CE Jesus Christ prophesied that the Son of Man would appear in heaven, gather his chosen ones, and send forth his angels with a great trumpet sound. This presence began in 1914 when the Gentiles seven times were terminated. In 1919, Jesus sent his heavenly angels to gather chosen ones from all parts of the earth bringing them together under the supervision of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. In 1934, the Jews received their new book, Jehovah, which was aimed at a great multitude of people who would ascribe glory and honor to Jehovah God and Jesus Christ and who would be rewarded with everlasting life on a paradise earth. Why is the Republic of Israel in our time not Israel meant in Romans 11:26? It says, and in this manner, all Israel will be saved. Just as it is written, the Deliverer will come out of Zion and turn away ungodly practices from Jacob. What does it mean when it says? And in this manner all Israel will be saved, that is, all spiritual Israel, the Israel of God. Galatians 6:16 says as for all those who walk orderly by this rule of conduct, peace, and mercy be upon them, yes, upon the Israel of God. And Romans 2:29 says, but he is a Jew who is one on the inside, and his circumcision is that of the heart by the Spirit and not by a written code. That person's praise comes from God, not from people. God's purpose is to have 144,000 spiritual Israelites, made of all nations, in a saved condition and ruling with His Son in heaven. That purpose will be fulfilled in this manner, namely, by figuratively grafting in branches from the wild olive to fulfill God's purpose of having His garden olive tree full of productive branches. Revelation 7 4 says those who were sealed, 144,000, sealed out of every tribe of the sons of Israel. This involved admitting Gentile Christians to be part of spiritual Israel. Some favor rendering the Greek expression at the beginning of the verse and then or and in the end, but the rendering and in this manner is supported by many lexicons and other Bible translations.
God condemns all religions and faiths that commit murder and any other crimes to humanity. Servants of God love what is good but must also learn to hate what is evil. This includes avoiding certain practices that God hates, such as fornication, lying, gambling, and theft. Christians should avoid gambling, as it is tainted by greed. Uncontrolled anger can lead to acts of violence, and Christians should not take revenge or return evil for others' wrong actions. Additionally, Christians should avoid using magical spells and spiritism, as they are harmful to God's eyes. Drinking too much alcohol can ruin health and disrupt family life. To truly love God, one must break free from evil practices, associate with godly people, and rely on God's help through prayer. By doing so, they can inherit God's kingdom and live a life of righteousness. God disapproves of beliefs and customs that come from false religion or are against Bible teachings. Jesus is not the only true God, and the Holy Spirit is not a person but God's active force. Jesus was not born on December 25th but was born on October 1st, a time when shepherds kept their flocks at night. Christmas and Easter customs come from ancient false religions, and early Christians did not celebrate them. Birthdays were held by persons who did not worship Jehovah, and fear of the dead is wrong. Jesus did not die on a cross but rather on a pole or stake. It may be difficult to abandon some beliefs, but pleasing God is more important than pleasing men. Jehovah is the source of life, and all living things owe their life to Him. True Christians are safety conscious, avoiding violent sports and entertainment that encourages violence. Animal life is sacred to God, and Christians may kill animals for food, clothing, or protection. Smoking, chewing beetle nuts, and taking drugs for pleasure are not for Christians. Blood is sacred in God's eyes, and it is wrong to eat blood or meat from unbled animals. True Christians will not accept blood transfusions but will accept other medical treatments like non-blood products. They want to live, but they will not try to save their life by eating blood. Jesus initiated one true Christian religion, which today consists of a single group of true worshippers of Jehovah God. The Bible warns that after the Apostles' death, wrong teachings and unchristian practices would spread, leading to various Christian denominations. True Christians exhibit love among themselves, respect for the Bible, honor God's name and preach about God's kingdom. They do not share in wars and treat each other as brothers and sisters. True Christians also avoid participating in the world's political affairs and social controversies, avoiding harmful conduct and attitudes. These characteristics make them distinct from other Christian denominations. Identifying a religious group with these characteristics is crucial for discerning true Christianity. To find out more on truth go to jw.org.